right, folks, just give me a sec. I need to adjust my... Um, I need to adjust things a little bit. Oh, I see. That's what locking does. I think we're ready. All right. So <clears throat> this stream, if the title isn't wasn't obvious, um, I'm just going to be playing some of the T or I almost called it Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles <laughs> uh, Turbo Graphics 16 mini games. Um, just want to make it clear, when I was a kid, I never owned a TurboGrafx-16. I owned one recently um, as an adult that I had bought from a um, flea market shop. Uh, and it was pretty cool, but unfortunately, games are really, really expensive for TurboGrafx-16, or at least they were. Um, of course, now with the advent of flash carts and stuff, I'm sure I could probably um, afford it. But honestly, um, I like this mini system. It has a lot of good games on it. This is not me playing, by the way. This is just a demo playing. Um, I'm um, going to try to play a smattering of a few different uh, titles just to see what all um, this has on it. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I have, in fact... Uh, played with this quite a bit so far already so I'm already aware of what's on it really but um, I'm gonna play through a few of my favorites and maybe introduce you guys to a few games you might have never seen before because there sure are a lot of them that I haven't seen um, the one that's on screen right now is actually one of the ones I bought this for because you know who doesn't want to play Castlevania um, or rather Dracula X which kind of sounds like Draculax. It kind of sounds like a laxative that's only for vampires. I guess drinking blood makes you um, a little bit constipated. Not really sure why um, they shrink wrapped her to a coffin to sacrifice her to Dracula. I'm sure that he probably would have been just fine with the blood being dispensed by any other means. And plus, now they have to clean this damn coffin off. Anyway, um, I will stop talking and start playing here in a moment. Alright, so... Also, my first time doing a midweek stream like this. I'm probably going to continue doing this. I'm going to... Um, just start doing midweek a midweek stream, a short one, and then my Saturday night stream. And um, midweek will just kind of be a grab bag of different content. In this particular instance, I will just be playing this newly released, well, not really newly released, but this console that I just bought uh, recently uh, for myself as a birthday present. Um, yeah, and in, in case anyone is curious, my birthday is tomorrow. 
and I'll be 38. I am officially an old fuck. And will continue to be. Anyway, so let me give you a tour of this thing first. So, first of all, you've got your TurboGrafx-16 games. And honestly, I feel that these are kind of lacking. <coughs> with the exception of um, quite a few of the games that are on the screen right now. So, Alien Crush is a fantastic pinball game. I really wish they had Demon's Crush on here, too. Um, so, left, it o left of it over there is Lords of Thunder, which is absolutely one of the best uh, TurboGrafx uh, CD games. It's just a fantastic shoot 'em up game. In fact, that's mostly what's on here. Uh, Blazing Lasers, which uh, my buddy Richard told me I need to play for some reason. That's, uh, that is on here as well. Uh, it, I played a little bit of it last night. It appears to be like a, a space shooter game. But once again, the TurboGrafx-16 has so many of those already that I'm not even sure that, um, you know, I really need to play another one. But, you know, it is what it is, right? Uh, hold on. Sorry, just, uh, stream into my virtual couch here and assuming that anyone is actually going to be joining us. Chances are probably not. Anyway, so moving on. So Dungeon Explorer seems to be a rather difficult uh, RPG game. And apparently it can use the... Uh, uh, I can't remember what it's called. The TurboGrafx-16 tap to let you have multiple players. And it just appears to be a game kind of like Gauntlet, except... You're, you have extremely low hit points. Not to mention the characters... Odin, get off the cord! Sorry. Um, it, um... What did I... Hold on, my dog is being really needy. So, Dungeon Explorer, like I said, it's just this almost Zelda gauntlet style... Uh, top-down RPG game. You have very few hit points, and there's monsters all over the place. For me, it was challenging. Who knows if you guys think it's challenging or not. And damn it, I was talking too long. Um, I picked a witch in this game, and I was kind of thinking, since this is originally a Japanese game, maybe they would have had some, like, sexy book, some, you know, anime-style witch. But no, it was your typical floppy tittied um, stringy haired pointy hat wearing um, stereotypical witch which is really unfortunate Moto Racer is just a racing game I'm sure that some of you on this console probably enjoy this game me personally I, when I played it, it, just, it felt kind of like Rad Racer on the Super, I mean, on the Nintendo, and it just didn't do anything for me. Power Golf just seems like a really odd addition uh, to the system because, I mean, let's be let's be serious. Uh, how many people really play? Well, okay, I shouldn't say that because I'm sure that there's a lot of people that play sports games. I am not one of them. When I was a kid, I used to play, I used to play, uh, uh, dang it, sorry, I got distracted because I just noticed that my, um, my title isn't correct. Let me fix that real quick. Hopefully this thing will have turbo graphics on here as a category, which it does not. So we're just going to put Lords of Thunder, because that's my favorite game on here. And update. Alright, anyway, so, yeah. Some of you probably play sports games, I do not. I'm moving on. I'll probably not try Power Golf, because I'm not interested. So, R-Type is just a fantastic little shooter game. It was one of those games that came out alongside the Super Nintendo launch, I remember. And it was very comparable, in a sense, to games like Gradius, 
Uh, and in the case of the game that came out at the time, um, Gradius 3 on the Super Nintendo. Uh, and it's a, it's a really good shooter game. Uh, honestly, I, I still like Gradius more. And fortunately, this uh, system has so many Gradius games. It has Salamander, which, as you uh, English folks will probably know as Life Force. And it's got Gradius 1 and 2. And Gradius 2, I don't believe we ever got here in the States on, on Super Nintendo or, or Nintendo. And then we just got all these other really cool shooters I can't wait to show you. Uh, dang it. I keep on talking too long. This is probably just the thing's way of telling me to shut up. So, okay, actually, Victory Run's the one that reminded me of Red Racer. So, honestly, I might not have played this one. So, I might have to come back and check that one out. So, Chu Man Fu, I have no idea what it is. It just sounds like a horribly racist game. Whoever he is, he's got four testicles and his hand is on fire and he doesn't look very happy about it. Uh, JJ and Jeff, oof. I played this one last night, and that game is just freaking weird. I honestly can't imagine, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure it probably was in Japan. Maybe it was even based off of something Japanese, but I don't know. Because everything about this game just seems so American to me. And they just look like friggin' morons, and they act like morons. And birds take, like full-size dog shit droppings on you. Mm. Sorry. Just having a little drink. <clears throat> Loosen up a little bit. So, Military Madness, I'm not so sure of. I know that there is a game on the PC Engine side, and I'll talk about that in a moment, uh, that had a military game, uh, like a strategy game. And that seemed pretty cool, but um, it uh, we who knows it, it might be it might be decent. And uh, I honestly can't tell if I'm getting any audio from my capture card because I am not seeing any. That's really peculiar. I'm gonna go validate this. We definitely want some audio on here. We definitely want some audio on here. No, we don't have any audio. Damn. No, we don't. I don't know what's going on. Perhaps this is an, an instance where I need to um, kill this and open it again. Kind of makes me wonder if I even had audio on my Zelda stream that I did. Audio output, capture audio only. Here, I'm gonna try killing it and opening it again. Nope, still nothing. Well, that really sucks. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, I definitely don't have any sound. Yeah, no, no sound for some reason. So I guess let's hide. Those ones I just unhidden. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with this before I continue, even though I really would like to get started. Troubleshoot my audio, but also I really 
really want to have audio. Do I have audio in any of my other scenes? What if I turn it off and turn it back on again? Oh, it was it was in the middle of doing a thing. Still nothing. Let me try some, something else real quick. I just want to see if my other consoles have sound. Or if it's just this one. Hmm. Yeah, I've got audio on this one. So for some reason, I can't get any audio out of this thing on my stream. Which strikes me as, oh, now it works. Okay. Well, now we know that apparently to chase the ghost out of things, you have to switch inputs and switch back again. So anyway, yeah. Now I can hear something other than me prattling on about these games. Yeah, so Noitopia seems to be a um, like another top-down dungeon crawler type game. Ninja Spirit is just a side-scrolling ninja platformer. Psychosis is this really weird, kind of honestly kind of boring side-scrolling shooter. I didn't play a whole lot of it, so for all I know, maybe there's more to it than just being a butt. But I don't I don't particularly care for it. I'll show it to you though. Uh, Space Harrier. We all know what Space Harrier is. We've all played it. We've all played it on our Genesis. Yeah, that's part of Genesis. Probably in the arcade. Possibly in the Master System. Splatterhouse, naturally, we all know what that is. You're essentially Jason Voorhees beating everyone to death with a 2x4. Um, now this is a, is a timeless game, so uh, Ease, some people pronounce it um, Wheeze or, I don't know, anyways, it's, it's Ease. Um, it's another top-down RPG, one of those things that PC Engine games are known for and a lot of early Japanese um, PC RPGs. Um, it's kind of cool, so instead of pressing a button to attack, you literally just run into the enemy, so it's kind of like hide light in that sense. But it's a, it's a very well polished game, and on top of all that, this is a PC CD game, so you get cutscenes, you get music, and it's got both part one and part two. Bonk's Revenge is probably another game that needs no introduction. It's pretty much um, prehistoric Charlie Brown headbutting dinosaurs. Um, honestly, I feel like this is often an overlooked game when it comes to uh, mascots. Like absolutely, either Bunk or or um, what was his name? The uh, the guy from Adventure Island was it? Was it Hud was his name actually Hudson? I don't remember. Anyway, um, it was either the guy from Adventure Island or Bonk, in my opinion, that would have been TurboGrafx 16's mascot. Sorry, Mike made the carrot cake totally good. Um Kadash is 
apparently a, a side-scrolling RPG style game, so it's kind of like um, Wanderer from Ease on the Super Nintendo, or I um, can't think of a whole other, a lot of others that will like it, but yeah. Um, that one, to be honest, I have not played. Uh, apparently, it's it's essentially Bubble Bobble too, and I like me some Bubble Bobble, so that might actually be one that I want to put, put some time into. And that's only because just now I saw the, the subtitle there in tiny font and read it. Air Zonk is essentially Bonk, but from the future. And if um, Gynax um, shit all over it. I like Gynax, don't get me wrong. Uh, Noitopia 2, I'm thinking, is probably exactly the same thing as Noitopia 1 with some differences. And here we have the most boring looking cover out of all of the games. But honestly, it's one of my favorite games on the TurboGrafx-16 side of this thing. Only because I love Adventure Island. I did that game a ton as a kid. Soldier Blade, I'm not sure I played yet, but I can I'm only imagine it's yet another space shmup. Bomberman, once again, needs no introduction. If you don't know who Bomberman is... Um, well, I feel sorry for you, but if you haven't played it, play Bomberman. Blow your friends up. Yeah, now we're back at the beginning. Lord of the Thunder. Fantastic. Uh, Side-scrolling shoot em up with a really kick-ass heavy metal soundtrack. So now I'm going to switch over to PC Engine side. I'll take a quick look. So I can only assume that that's another bonk game. Might even be the same one. But I'm not sure. Uh, we got the Japanese version of Ease Book 1 and 2. Same difference as the other one, except this time you can't read it unless you're Japanese or no Japanese. Super Darius, uh, one of the most prolific side scrolling shooters of all time, where you sh uh, you're a ship and you're shooting giant space fish. Um, pretty much all these games are fantastic, especially the latest one that was out on Steam that you could actually play on two monitors to stretch out the screen. Uh, this one, I didn't know anything about until I watched uh, High Score Girl on Netflix. Um, let me see if I can pronounce it right. So, the Genji and the Haike clans. Uh, it's just a side-scrolling uh, ninja, ninja, ninja game that um, has a bunch of creepy looking monsters crossed with technology. It's got a almost Cthulhu um, mythos feel to it. Superstar Soldier is another good shoot 'em up game. I don't have a lot to say on it yet because I haven't played a lot of it. Um, Daimakai Daima Mura is essentially Ghosts and Goblins. Actually, I'm sorry, it's Ghouls and Ghosts. It's essentially the same thing as the Genesis version of Ghouls and Ghosts. Except, in my opinion, with much better sound effects and graph... I mean, uh, sound effects and music. Graphics suffer a little bit compared to the Genesis. This one is actually one of my favorite games on here. Um, I didn't know of this character until I played uh, Project X Zone, which was a PS2 game where it's essentially like Super Robot Wars, except you're controlling characters from across Capcom and Namco, and then eventually they... Uh, had a 3DS version, actually two two uh, 3DS games, where um, they also included Sega characters in there as well, like Oolala from uh, Space Channel 5, and I think they even had Sonic the Hedgehog. Not sure though, don't quote me on that. But really cute, top-down, um, like hack and slash, slash shoot 'em up style game. Honestly, if I ever had time in my life to do a remake of a game or something, I would love to do it of that game. Better than doing it of a Nintendo title, because after all, with a Nintendo title, you'll just get a uh, copyright claimed into oblivion. Uh, all, all, all Dennis. So I'm guessing it's a, another space shoot 'em up. I haven't played it yet. Uh, so I played the hell out of this one. I actually really love this one. So Serai Senshi Spriggan is basically another top-down shooter 
but it's got this very es escaflone uh, and uh, yeah, like a very escaflone feel to it because it's a, a medieval setting but with some high technology like mechs and such. It also has a real Aura Battler Dunbine uh, feel to the game as well. This is the same Neotopia we saw from the other side, but with better cover graphics because Americans don't know how to draw cover art in the 80s. Uh, Gradius, I don't think this one needs any explanation. If you haven't played Gradius, it's like pretty much the granddaddy of side-scrolling space uh, shoot-em-up games. Uh, and honestly, um, one of the best, and it still has a formula that's, that's followed today in a lot of Konami games. Well, unless you count their um, up current obsession with pachinko machines because they're morons. But up until up until then, uh, it was used quite a bit because you had like Gradius, you had Salamander or Life Force, you had Parodius, which was essentially Gradius with tits. Uh, Salamander, like I said, this is Life Force. Uh, absolutely a better version, in my opinion, to the Nintendo version. And on top of that, very different. Uh, because it doesn't have, as far as I can tell, it doesn't have the um, upgrade parts that the uh, Nintendo version did. This one is some kind of board game. I opened it up. Just because the art style looked fairly Toriyama-esque, and I doubt it is. But it's some sort of board game, and I don't know a lot of Japanese, so I would have a very hard time playing this. Honestly, I would love to see if I could get Mars Girl in here to, uh, and we could play this and she could translate. So this one, just by looking at the cover, I'm pretty sure you could tell what it's supposed to be. Uh, the, the name kind of does too, uh, but so it's Ninja Ryukenden, so this is essentially Ninja Gaiden, this is the TurboGrafx-16 version of Ninja Gaiden, and honestly, graphics-wise, I would say that this isn't that much better than the Nintendo version, in fact, there's something about the Nintendo version I like a lot better, I think it's just because it moves faster and it's a little smoother, but the graphic quality here is a little bit better. Um, this is a, another top-down space shoot 'em up so I, I, I hope you're seeing a, a theme here. So here, essentially, you are either Bomberman, I'm not sure who the ship is, I forget, and or you can play as an actual PC engine and shoot CDs and cue cards at your enemies. So here's a second Spriggan game. This one is a side-scrolling shoot 'em up whereas the other one was a... Um, top-down scrolling shoot em up Not to mention this one is, is very much uh, high-tech future-esque combat. Uh, Snatcher is, uh, is a game that I would say is very well known, but it's probably obscure to the American audience. So, and I'm probably about to make an ass of myself here. I believe Snatcher was a Hideo Kojima game, if I'm not mistaken. But it's uh, it's essentially like a kind of like an interactive novel type of thing, where it's like you go around the areas and point and click, and you solve puzzles, you talk to people. This game was only released in the states, I believe, on the Sega CD, and it's very hard to get nowadays and very expensive. I have never played it. I've always wanted to. And unfortunately, that that is going to continue to be the case here because this is completely in Japanese, and there's no way I can play it. And I would have loved it if, like with the Super Nintendo Classic, if um, Konami had have done either a translation of this or just ported the translation they had on the Sega CD version over to this, so that American audiences could in, could finally enjoy enjoy it on some kind of a portable console. Uh, and this is Gradius 2. It's basically Gradius but, but with more of the stuff that you love. Oh boy, this one. We're definitely going to play this one. Uh, this one is one of the only examples I can think of of a, uh, of a homoerotic space shooter game. Now, there's nothing about it that 
is overtly sexual, I guess, at least not in this game, in the future releases of this game, which were spread across so many different consoles, including Super Nintendo and uh, PlayStation, it gets really interesting. And I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, having games with homoerotic imagery is bad, and I'm certainly not saying that being gay is bad. But this game is just, it's extremely strange. And you'll, you'll see what I mean when we play it, because it's, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm probably digging myself a deeper hole. But it's, it's not, it's not because it's home, the imagery is homoerotic, it's just because of just how uh, odd it gets. Anyway, you'll see, because like I said, I will I will absolutely play that one. In fact, I'll probably play it first, just so that um, the reference is still in your mind. Uh, then, of course, we... So this here, and the Spriggan games, uh, and another one that we're about to move over to in a moment. And, oh, and, and of course, uh, Lords of Thunder are my favorite games on here. So this is a game that we never got here in the States. It's, uh, so, Akumajo Dracula X Chino Rondo, or Castlevania Rondo of Blood, or Dracula X Rondo of Blood, I guess. So this is the prequel to Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and it's a fantastic game, and you get to see, like, super cute, um, young Maria in this, who throws birds at people instead of using a whip, because of course she does. She's a... She's a cute little girl, you know, she's not going to go around decapitating people. Um, another Bomberman game, so on the English one we got Bomberman 93, and here we got Bomberman 94. And as you can see, yes, with the proper multi-tap on this, you can play with five other people. How about that? And actually, it's not five other people, it's five people total, because the original... Original TurboGrafx-16 only had one port on it, so if you wanted to have more than one player, you had to plug in a multi-tap to get that functionality. And I'm guessing it was just a multiplexer or something. Uh, and then this, although it looks like a Bomberman game, this is actually essentially like Puyo Puyo, but with uh, Bomberman heads and, and bombs. So this, this game here is my other favorite game, and it's probably just because I really dig the 80s life, or 80s, not lifestyle, the 80s art style on it. That is just a really fun game, but it kicks my ass so much. So The Kung Fu is essentially a game that over here was known as China Warrior. It's not very good in my opinion, it's, you've got this massive well-drawn, well-animated sprite, but all you can really do is kick and punch and jump. And that's that's pretty much it. There's not a whole lot to it. It actually reminds me a ton of the original Kung Fu game on the Nintendo, and it makes me wonder, in fact, if this might have been a sequel or if this was related to it, because it really feels like it. We'll probably play that one just so that you can see it. This one is a full-fledged RPG game. I loaded this up and the moment I saw all the moon speak, I was like, yeah, I, I can't do this. This is too much. Alright, uh, Galaga 88 is essentially the good old Galaga that you already know and love, but with a nice fresh coat of paint on it. Nice sound effects. Uh, honestly, I, I would prefer to play this one over the original, and it's not because I care that much about graphic fidelity. I mean, after all, these last couple weeks, I've been playing nothing but 8-bit Nintendo games, and here we are in, you know, the 16-bit world, so, yeah, I'm, graphics don't mean a lot to me, but this game just feels a lot more polished than the original. Sorry. I'm just taking a swig. <sighs> Alright, no, <that one. coughs> Fantasy Zone. And actually, I want to comment on this, because I find this kind of interesting. So, nowadays, you would never dream of seeing, for example, like, a uh, Sony game on Nintendo, for example. Granted, we are starting to see, for, for, well, not for better or worse, but, 
generally, basically, we're seeing Microsoft games on the Switch, so maybe we're getting back to that point where companies are able to coexist and even sell games for each other's consoles. But anyway, back in these days, like, for example, Fantasy Zone, the Opa Opa, which is that flying ship there, for a long time was co technically considered to be Sega's mascot before Sonic was. And, I mean, so is Alex Kid, but Alex Kid isn't on here. But, yeah, friggin' Fantasy Zone. Like, just... Like, as Sega as Sega can be, and it's here on this other console. I would actually really like to understand how that worked. Uh, now, Dragon Spirit is a top-down, another top-down shooter. I actually played this one on the Nintendo, and it's a fantastic fan fantasy-based top-down shoot-em-up game where you're flying a dragon and your level-ups make it grow extra heads and stuff. We'll definitely play that one. This one, I have no freaking idea what it is. I can only assume it's croquet. And as far as... E even if I was a kid in Japan, I don't think I could really imagine being... Having this be one of my childhood favorite games, because Croquet just seems like such a really weird thing to play on uh, on a video game console. Nectaris is another, I believe it's a shoot 'em up. I'm I'm not sure. I might I'll have to play that one again and be positive. So Dungeon Explorer we saw on the other system, and New Noitopia we saw on the other system. But once again, this time it's got better artwork, and on the other one it just looked like. Hanna-Barbera um, had a bowel movement. Alright, so cool. Yeah, we've uh, talked about all the games, so let's actually play some. And I'm really sorry. I probably shouldn't have spent so much time just going through the games and talking about them. So I'm going to play Cho Choaniki first, just so that you can see what I'm talking about. Like, this game is just super weird. So if you like... Uh, if you like Mus muscle bound men and and really weird uh, like human animal alien office furniture hybrids you're gonna love this so once again I have no idea what's going on here so I could read some of that katakana but that's it and I saw the number 10 in there and there's a couple of exclamation points so I can only assume that that uh, is a good indicator that it's important that we uh, succeed at uh, using our beefy man-woman thing to kill the horrible abominations. So, naturally, I'm going to pick the chick. I mean, they're both kind of androgynous, but I'm going to pick the chick. So you get to pick your level. Oh, actually, I guess you don't. And if you don't do anything immediately, you just die. So, there's that. So, let's see. We got a satyr in a cage up front. We've got what appear to be a bunch of women in the background in flying cages. These spinning bat things. So, once again, like if you look at the the later versions of this game, I mean, you can find out by either watching John Tron's video on Japanese shoot 'em up games or watching the Angry Video Game Nerds uh, video. But yeah, this is a really weird game. So see, like, we got a guy back there in a Speedo flying behind us. I don't know if we had to, like, actually touch him to pick him up, but regardless, we didn't. Um, so, and, and you know, I, I, ah, shit. I am absolutely aware that, you know, it's, it's so commonplace for, uh, games to have a bunch of scantily clad women in them. Uh, showing off their panties and shit, and um, it seems like I'm frowning upon this uh, display of, you know, man, man service, I guess you could call it, for the lack of a better term, since it's male fan service. But, once again, it's really not that it's a man, because I'm not really, I'm not, like, one of those people that gets upset by things like that. It's just, like, look at that shit. It's flying by, just this weird, almost... Like Kamashita looking fucking face, while this really distorted Japanese style music is playing in the background. It's just super weird. 
And, it, like, in later iterations, like, I'll give you an example. Uh, there's a fighting game, right. for example, where one of the f levels that you're fighting on top of is this train. And on the train, there's a, essentially a bunch of, like, all the train cars are quite literally humping each other. Like, they're making the little humpy, humpy motions with their hands, and, like, yeah, that's right, I said a train has hands. Like, you will, you will, in fact, shit. I mean, maybe, maybe after the stream is over, I'll actually hop on the Super Nintendo and show you what that looks like, assuming that I have it. Because, yeah, it's like, it's like a, a man train, literally. There is a train, and the, the, the engine of it has, like, a man's face on it, and there's arms coming out of it. And all of the different ships have, like, just, I mean, all of the different, uh, yeah, all the different ships are just some really weird crossbreed of man and furniture or man and vehicle. Like, for example, there's a, uh, there, there's a character that is literally a boat with breasts and a face. And then there's also a, a character that's, like, basically the bottom half of the moon. Um, and some guy is, like, sitting inside of it. And basically, like, his foot comes out the bottom of it. Another fleshy protrusion. So it's just absolutely um, a very sexually charged game. It's just, it's just so... It's so awesomely weird. But, I mean, other than that, it's a fantastic game. Like, it's really fun to play. The mechanics are very akin to, like, a Gradius-style shoot-em-up game. Because you, you got the option pod, which are, like, that little flying baby thing and the uh, flying man in the speedo. And now we're fighting some creepy... Uh, Chinese looking ghost guy who looks like he's just two butts uh, glued on top of each other. And I don't know if. if oh, I guess it is him we're supposed to be shooting. Okay. For a second there, I was like, am I supposed to be shooting the armor still and that guy's just getting in the way or what? <clears throat> yeah, but just delightfully weird. And I would really, really love to, to see if I could find the, the fighting game on the Super Nintendo so I can simultaneously like play it terribly and just kind of give you an I idea of why I was pointing out what I was. Okay, there you go. So it, it's not like in and of itself there's nothing wrong with this. It's just really out of place and weird. He's not happy. <laughs> Alright, so, yeah, that's how Choniki goes. I think that the uh, other title for it was like Choniki Great Brother or something. So I don't just want to play all my favorite games, but I am going to kind of go in order as I scroll across the screen and just pick my favorites, I guess. Originally I said I was going to play a little bit of each of them, but we're already at an hour and I don't want to drag this out too long. Do I still have... Oh, I guess there wouldn't be any audio, would there? I'll let the little opening bit play. This this is like the the age of like pseudo um, pseudo full motion video where you just have a bunch of sprite planes moving over each other with uh, audio playing over it. I'm just gonna try to guess what's going on here. So looks like Doctor Light. He made a teleporter or something, and it fucked up. 
and now we gotta clean up his uh, clean up his shit. Which oh, that's a fucking dinosaur. Okay. When they were scrolling down, it kind of looked like a pile of shit. <coughs> and now we have our heroines. The pink-haired one there is obviously the the best one. Yeah, look at that! Look at that beautiful. 1980s style hand-drawn artwork. Well, granted it's digitized, obviously, but that is just such an 80s style right there. Yeah, anime anime will never be the same again. Art styles now are really cool, but I, I have a soft spot for the 1980s style of animation. Always been something about shoot 'em up games that have nice big beefy like lasers in them. Like something about that's just super satisfying. And one thing I do want to say, just on the on the whole, for this this system in general, is I just absolutely love the quality of the emulation on this. Like it's just it's beautiful. I would honestly say that this is probably just as good as the ah, shit the uh, emulation on the um, Super Nintendo Classic, if not maybe a little bit better. And no, no, it's not bad. Super NES Classic had a really good emulation. Um, nice filters. <clears throat> and honestly, if I had to, if I had to rank them all, so obviously like the Nintendo and Super Nintendo Classic would probably be right up at the top, and then this guy, I would probably rank. Uh, I mean, in in terms of everything it offers, oh man, I'm really bad at this. Um, I would probably place this one in fourth because the Genesis Mini has really fantastic emulation as well. But I also feel like, as far as its selection of games go, it's just better than this, honestly. Granted, there's a lot of games missing from um, the Genesis Mini that I think are just criminal for them to have not included, like Sonic and Knuckles and Sonic 3, because we all know that those are the best uh, Sonic games. And Sonic CD, but you know, I can't really fault them, because that's a Sega CD game, you not know, a Sega Genesis game, technically. <laughs> so, I really like... I do like the game selection on this, but it's mostly from the standpoint that there's a lot of stuff I haven't played on it before this. Like, I'd never played this game before, and I, I'm freaking loving it. In fact, this is probably one of those games I'll come back and play again and again. <clears throat> Reminds me a lot of Radiant Silver Gun, actually, which is probably my favorite shooter game of all time. Although, honestly, I've never beaten it. One of these days, I really need to sit down and actually dedicate myself to learning to play that game and actually be good at it. Because I would love to be good at bullet hell games. Because as you can see, I'm, I'm definitely not doing fantastically right now. Of course, it's also probably due to the fact that I've been drinking just a little bit. But yeah, um... Maybe in a future stream I'll do that, actually. I would really like to do some, um, do some Radiant Silver Gun. Which actually has a very, uh, 80s art style to it as well. Even though it's really a late 90s game, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Sega Saturn, so that was like mid to late 90s. Honestly, I wish, I wish I still had a, a Sega Saturn. And, um... And Radiant Silver Gun. I actually had Radiant Silver Gun at one point. Um, that was a dream come true. But I was an idiot and I sold it. As I tended to do a lot of things. <clears throat> oh man, that sucks. Maybe a bomb will get me loose? Okay. So, yeah. And I'm out of luck. 
So that's all we're gonna play of that one for now, because I don't want to spend too much time on all these games. Uh, fuck it. We'll play. We'll play some kung fu, some China warrior, just so that you can see what I'm talking about. This game was also um, uh, on High Score Girl. And uh, the main character actually really liked this game. I I am not a I'm not a fan. It literally, look, it's just it's you're essentially just punching the shit out of flies and hooded figures, which I can only assume are like some sort of Illuminati group that are uh, bent on spreading the coronavirus via 5G and internet. And I'm some Bruce Lee looking motherfucker and. I have to duck flies because I'm apparently so allergic to them that I get a tenth of my remaining life taken off uh, from touching them. Oh wow, he actually blinks and when he punches he does like the whole Bruce Lee mouth open showing his teeth kind of stuff. But yeah, it's uh... I'm sure it gets harder. Oh, I'm supposed to jump over rocks. I'm sure it gets harder, but it's... I mean, the, the gameplay is just kind of stilted. I, I don't know that I would really care to spend a whole lot of time playing this if, if um, I was going to pick a thing to play. And damn it, I missed the Oolong Tea. The only reason I know that's Oolong Tea is because that's what um, Haruo uh, calls it in uh, High Score Girl. And now we have to fight some guy who's just clearly some you know, stereotypical American guy. We can tell because he has a mustache, he's bald, and he's wearing uh, camo fatigues. I'm not sure what, what he's doing here in China, but he's here and he's kicking my ass. I'm just gonna keep kicking him in the chest until all the McDonald's he's been eating um, puts him into an early grave. Come on. Succumb. There, and flat on his ass. And back in the day when we used to give a shit about, like, getting points for things. Nowadays you can't get a... And I got hit in the face with a rock. Well, as I say, nowadays you can't get a gamer to do anything without, you know, promising him, like, some hidden weapon or a hidden level or something. Nowadays it's not really good enough to do something just for score. Well, maybe. Because a lot of people will, uh play a PlayStation game well past its well past its relevancy just to get a platinum trophy on it so I guess uh, I guess I can I can see that still kind of being a thing just in an evolved sense whoa they know how to duck now man they should talk to these great coded guys and tell them man have you ever tried ducking it's fucking amazing you don't die. Punch and fire. Who needs skin? And I guess I'm supposed to be kicking those sticks out of the air too. I guess we're a bunch of five-year-olds throwing sticks and rocks at each other. He's not very happy. He only has zero lives left. And getting shit or beehives or whatever thrown or wasp nest thrown at my head. And by the way. Can't do shit except for punch when you're ducking. I learned that just now. Pro tip. Pro Jared. Actually, pro tip from Pro Jared. Don't send nudes to kids. Also, if any, um, just, just kind of on the same note, if any of you um, I Stand With Vic fans are watching this for any reason, um, get with that lawyer guy that represents Vic Mignona and ask him how much he charges for a clown show, because I've got a birthday party coming up. Because, man, you, uh, <laughs> you brought just the biggest joke of, a, of like, a lawsuit to uh, Dallas Court. If you want to be taken seriously, maybe don't have a frivolous case in the first place. Anyway. Oh, look! Same guy again. 
except his pants are a little bit more soiled this time, and now my pants are soiled because he kicked my ass. Might even be the same guy. Might just be wearing different pants. I've, ne I've just I've never been a fan of games like this. This is just I can't imagine being a kid and having this be like the only game you get for your system for you know for Christmas that year. Like this just it's it, it, it's the it's 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 the equivalent of like a rail shooter. Like you're just stuck on rails except you're not like getting to move around very much. Like you literally have the option to walk and jump and that's it. Oh and duck. And blink. And punch and kick. But you don't really get any power ups and there's after beating a game like this I would assume that there's probably not a whole ton of replay value either. Oh. So if I punch those flies I get some of my life back. And of course we have green guy who is an asshole and he ducks. I will say this though. The sprites are, are fantastic. Like, I can honestly say I don't think I've ever seen a sprite that big on the Super Nintendo, for example. And definitely not on the Genesis. Alright, clearly I suck at this game. So, we're not going to play this one anymore. And I'm assuming that says game over. Or, fuck you. Or, get good. Get to good. Alright, so, like I said, this one's a... This one's an RPG, I'm not going to touch that one. Only because we could be playing that one for hours, and like I mentioned before, it's completely in Japanese, and I can't read any of it. But, you know, once again, maybe that might be fun to have somebody on the stream that speaks Japanese that can tell us what, what it says. And then we can play it and make educated decisions. So... Just like standard Galaga, you are stuck to the bottom part of the screen. You can't move up and down. Which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. That's just how Galaga is. Oh, and that's, a, that's something I didn't even get to mention about um, the Total Graphic 16 controller. It had built-in turbo. And the Mini is no exception. So let's turn that on. Now, unfortunately, a lot of the... Uh, games from this era have a limit as far as how many projectiles can appear on the screen at any given time. Oh, well I killed it by blowing up, so that's something, right? Anyway, so yes, you... Basically, in games like this, you have to... If you're like right next to something or you're hitting something, that'll make your projectiles disappear, and then you can shoot faster. But yeah, I love the little touches that this game has. Like instead of having these really simplistic sprites, you have these almost 3D looking sprites. And everything just explodes in, in a pretty little fireworks explosion. At the same time, it has some of that old school charm to it. I like how these space bees, you, you shoot them, and you have to shoot them twice before they die. Could you imagine if real wasps are like that? Like, you hit them with your shoe and kill them, and then all of a sudden, you know, they just come back and they're pissed off. And then you have to hit them again before they're really dead. So speaking of getting stung by stuff, since, spring, since it's spring here in Texas, I am... Honestly, scared to death of leaving my clothes on the floor because scorpions tend to like to sleep in your clothes. Last year, I had a scorpion fall asleep on my pants, and I ended up reaching down to tie my shoe, and the fucker stung me on the arm. So naturally, once I brushed him off of me with I think like a piece of paper that I had sitting on my table next to me, I. Yeah, I smashed him the shoe. And I'm dead. Uh, but yeah, there's been a lot of times when we've had scorpions here and they've just been like sleeping on my pants leg or whatever. One time I even painted them red because I was 
actually painting models at the time with my airbrush. And he was just sitting there on my leg, so I grabbed him with my tweezers and spray painted his ass red. And then I tore his arms and legs off and threw him out in the yard. Anyway, so moving on, uh, Fantasy Zone. I'm not a big fan of Fantasy Zone, to be honest with you. So I would rather not play it, and plus, it is kind of a. It's kind of a well known game. Eh, whatever, I'll play it. I'm just not going to play it for very long. I mean, for one thing, I'm probably going to die really fast. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that the Genesis Mini also has this game on it, but it has the Sega Genesis version. Where the graphics are just slightly better. Oh. It'd be nice if the, the, the person playing the game was better, too. But the cool thing about this one that's atypical of shooters at the time is I can point myself in two different directions. And there's actually another shooter on this bit called that, but it's the one that's like your luck in one direction. On this one, you can fly in either direction until the screen loops around, which is a really neat little, uh, little trick that it does. Yeah, I forgot you can, like, shit bombs. So basically, you need to kill all those balloon, those big balloon looking things. Jeez. <laughs> so basically all those little red dots can they show you the, those uh, big pod looking things you have to kill. I feel pretty bad that I suck this bad. Oh man, this is such a colorful little game. Although, honestly, I'd say the monsters are a little bit uninspired. I do like the fact that they're so cartoony looking, especially the big ones, and the animation they do when they die. So see, these don't suck. They make them a lot farther. That's the, one, that's the one thing I don't like, is the fact that you, you can't, like, do something to maintain your direction. Like, I would love it if there was a way that you could hold down the A button, for example, and have that make it so that you could continue, like, facing this direction. So go back and forth. Which, now all of a sudden I'm doing it, probably just because there's a pause. Because normally that does not help. You are. And then he falls apart just like IKEA furniture. Interesting, okay. Man, I have quite a bit of money. Turbo engine, racket engine, wide beam. Huh. Okay. This is actually kind of cool. So I do not nearly have 10,000. I definitely don't have 100,000. So I guess I'll take this. I have no idea what this does, but I can afford so why not? I'll take that and I'll take that. And those two can just stick around. So now I have to pick my parts. Oh, okay. So that's my speed up. That's my weapon. That's my bomb, I guess. Holy shit! This is actually a little bit of a liability. But now, I'm probably gonna run into shit twice as much. Oh my god. Those things don't die. Okay, so 
apparently my laser power actually diminishes over time. Yeah, so clearly, just in case it wasn't clear before, I rarely played this game. In fact, the only reason I knew about it is because of Fantasy Star. Online, you had these mags called the Opa Opa Mag that looked like this little flying. Damn it. This little flying character. I kind of wonder if Persona. Oh, Persona, jeez. Uh, Fantasy Star Online has, has that or not. If they have the Opa Opa Mag or not. Okay, so apparently the laser runs out. Because once I died, my, my speed up went away. So I can only assume that the same thing must have happened. Oh boy. That would have actually been really challenging to dodge. Just, there's a lot. They were fairly dense. But once again, I'm, I'm just not good at video games, unfortunately. Then again, I did beat Zelda too. I think that counts for something, but not, not the same. So, yeah, I like Dragon Spirit. Let's play this one. This is super different from the NES one also, because the NES one you actually start in a castle, and you start as this super awesome multi-headed gold dragon blasting everything. And then you do this level, I think. So this game is a lot like Xevious in that you have the ability to both shoot down into, like, the lower plane and kill those like Loch Ness monsters that are down there and then of course blow up those little capsules on the ground. So yeah, it's really neat. You you can you have like two a two pronged attack, but it also means that your enemy can also do the same to you. In fact a lot of these enemies like these fuckers here, they fake you out because you're like, oh shit, you're on the ground, but then they come up and get in your face like that. And then you still got these uh, Loch Ness looking monster bastards who no doubt owe you $3.50. What looks like a bar off from uh, Monster Hunter right down there, and I lost one of my heads. Shit. And then those tree things down there, they're not fooling anybody. Man, of course I can't. Ah, damn it. This is one of those things I've always wondered if, like, maybe this is where Panzer Dragon got its uh, beginning. Like, maybe it's people that Pan the Panzer Dragon doing games like this as a kid, because this is really the only dragon themed shooter game I can think of off the top of my head. Whoop! Oh. Yeah, I'm not good at this either. But that's okay, because once again, we weren't going to play a ton of, of these particular games. Uh, I mean, well, any of them, really. Just kind of a little showcase of the ones that I particularly like. Definitely have to show you JJ and Jeff, because that game is just... Whoa, what the hell? Okay, so this guy explodes into feathers, and those feathers hurt apparently. Yep. Give me some interesting, interesting monsters. Maybe these look like flying hermit crabs. Just for shits and giggles, let's let's see what the croquet game is about. Let's see if there's any sticky wickets. Oh, man, I am already not enthused. Some Japanese boomer up there dancing around like he has to take a shit. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. 
Actual. So what does that say? I think it's ah, uh, akutsu, atsuku yuri. So I get to pick between a boomer, a boomer, and a millennial. Oh wow, and these were people that were 60 and 76 and 80, so never mind, these guys are probably pre-boomer. Some woman who won't tell you her age because her, 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 that's what we do, right? She can't. I can't back up, can I? But I kind of want to pick a different character. But we'll take the old guy who looks like he has dementia. Oh my god. This is alright, it's um it's croquet. Oh, do I really have to control this little asshole too? Oh my Jesus. I guess if that's not about power, I guess that's um the centering of the shot. Would have been nice to know that beforehand. Guys, we are we are straight getting fucked here. He's like, what do I do with my fucking hands? Okay, so that is in fact how that works. Japanese kids have fun memories of from the 80s. Damn. We are, we are just bad at this. Oh, I get fucked. Hey, I'm old! And I'm, I'm a wild hip dude! You wanna go do some meth behind the tool shed? Oh, shit! This 
this game is also put for me to sleep, but at the same time, I want to give it a fair shake. I'm certainly not going to play the whole thing. Why are you going back that way? There's nothing back there. Maybe I just don't know the rules. Good job, idiot. Yeah, okay. Oh wait, no, one one more shot with 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 um Dick knows the pirate here. I stopped menstruating twenty years ago. Alright, I've had enough of this. Give Nectaris a shot. I don't think I tried this one, but I think it's just another, just another shmup game. It makes me feel like it's a friggin' Tetris game. In the year 21, whatever, everything is fucked. Here's a map of my asshole. Oh, this is the one. I have played this. So this is the one where it's essentially a super robot style game. So we're not going to get anywhere with that because we don't know any Japanese. I'm not going to bother with it. I'll, I'll show you that one back on the English side. That one too. And that one. So let's, let's check this out. If this is anything remotely like Bonk's Revenge, then we will... Um, We'll go play it over there on the English side where I know what's going on. Okay. This is not Bonk's Revenge. This, I believe this is Bonk 1. Oh, apparently I had Turbo 1. Although that is kind of funny. Gonna get you. Gonna get you. Gonna get you. I get a headbang, yay! Oh, that's great. I'm gonna leave one turbo. I'm gonna get you. Gonna get you. Gonna ah. Gonna get you. Damn it. Yeah, I get fucked. Alright, I'm gonna turn it off now. I will play this, I will try to play through this first level and then I'm going to move on. Because honestly, I'm actually really tired. Oh shit! That flower was a hidden racist. Bart Simpson for a second, and then it makes you an old man who can... I'm not sure what this does. I'm guessing I'm just old and I spit and I uh, hit things in my forehead. And now I'm invincible, apparently. Because being old does that to you. It makes you think you're invincible. It doesn't make you think that you're about to die or that you need to hide from the coronavirus. You just, you know, get pissed off and try to kill everything. You get the idea. You hit shit with your head, you eat meat, and then you hit more thick with your head. It's a good game, though. I like to give it more time. So, yeah. So on the English side of things, I'm probably not going to play a whole lot of them, because honestly, I'm starting to get really tired. I think I might go until 8.30 or 9, and then I'm probably going to call it a night because I need to go to sleep or something and I am falling asleep here guys so yeah you're, you're typical but better than oh shit 
why did I do that? Your typical but better than average side scrolling space shooter. And I swear, these Gundam looking head things are in every one of these games. Even the latest ones. And the different items you pick, or the different balls you pick up, all of those actually have to do with what it's for. Like, for example, the green ones are bombs. The red ones increase your missile power, I believe. So they're in shit missiles. I usually don't find it. Oh yeah, and then um, blue is armor, even though the armor is green colors. <sighs> the other cool thing about... <sighs> Jesus. I died already. But well, anyway, see how it says Zone A up there? Why is it even letting me enter a, a high score? I don't have a high score. But basically at the end of every level you get to pick which area you're going to next. And that will kind of just um, determine the difficulty. And I believe the ending. Granted there's not really a whole lot of different endings to this. It's not exactly story intensive. So I definitely want to want to show this one. I want to show Ninja Gaiden and uh, Golden Ghost. <clears throat> yeah. So if you've seen High Score Girl, that sound should be very familiar. And this uh, creepy old lady. Yes, very Japanese. So we got these like sealed rock things coming after us for some reason. We got these weird flying Cthulhu monsters. We got skeletons with sticks that are bouncing us all over the fucking place. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry. I'm doing horrible. I definitely need to get some sleep. Try this again. Thank you for giving me two two swings of magic sword power. I do happen to remember that um, Angry Video Gamer and Mike and Tay were kind of coming together. These, like, games aren't good. I really disagree. This is absolutely a Japanese game. I believe that this particular title is actually fairly well received in Japan. And over here, maybe we're just a little bit too um, full of ourselves. So, Superstar Soldier, like I said, is just another shmup game. I'm gonna probably just from here on out stick to the games that I actually like. So we'll play this one, we'll play Ninja Gaiden, we'll play Valkyrie, um, the Valkyrie game, and Lords of Thunder, and then I am probably gonna call it a stream. So I hope that so far you guys have had fun. Oh yeah, we need to play Ninja Gaiden there too if I didn't already mention that one. So, same ending as the Sega Genesis, I mean the same opening as the Genesis one. And more or less the, the level is, the levels are the same too. We got the same guillotines coming up, the trees full of birds. I actually like this version of Ghosts and Goblins better than the Genesis one and better than Super Golden Ghost on the Super Nintendo. There's something about this one that's just more interesting. Like they have a whole lot more uh, power-ups. And now I'm a fucking duck. Stop being a duck. Granted, for sure, the uh, Super Nintendo version has better graphics and better music. But I don't think that the, the weapon selection and the gameplay has nearly the same charm that this one does. Not to mention, I'll throw up. 
No, 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 not like regurgitate, like throw in the upward direction. I'm ashamed to admit I've never beaten a Ghost and Goblins game. That's probably a goal I should have one of these days to finally beat one. I've never had the patience for it. God, is everything just an angry asshole in a tuxedo? Throw down too. <laughs> throw down. Throw down and throw up. Your choice. Whether you want to throw down or throw up. I guess it all depends on what you ate. Get thrown up. Can you hear me? Hello. I gotta stick around here. Ah, skull fucked. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not streaming in Discord this time. All right. Anyway, you've seen. You've seen this. You see me. I'm not streaming in Discord. Lately, I think I'm probably doing a little better if I do some of the streaming alone. When things get distracted and uh, side conversations start happening, I feel like it might detract just a little bit. So anyway, here's one of what I think is Namco's um, mascot characters. Even though, know, unfortunately, she's not seen very often anymore. But look at that sprite. 360 degrees, so I mean obviously we just have diagonals and the cross movement. That's eight different directions and each one of those has its own animation sprite. That's, in my opinion, that's, that's impressive. Plus the music is, is iconic. If you're familiar with um, this character, that is. But yeah, it's just a fun little game with an impressive art style. The gameplay isn't overly complicated, although I'm sure I'll get my ass turned inside out here in no time. This is another one of those games I would have really loved if um, we could have had translations. Unfortunately, we didn't get those. So I just kind of got to guess what's going on. Plus, being a shooter game, I think we could probably get through it mostly without... Wah, wah, wah. Okay, I'm better now. Go over here. And talk to Mommy Dearest, and she's gonna give me a sword. For some reason. My sword is glowing now. And now I'm throwing the day blast at people. The day blasts now only at Arby's. Have I ever told you guys, so speaking of food, have I ever told you guys about how much, um, how much I dislike, um, Jimmy John's as a restaurant? Totally out of the blue, it's probably just because I'm tired and drunk simultaneously, but Jimmy John's is a place that just has the most boring sandwiches you can imagine. Like, imagine when you're a kid that your mom just gave you a piece of stale bread and smeared some, like, I don't know, smeared some, smeared some mayo on it. That's what a Jimmy John sandwich is. It's dry, it's stale, it's boring. And my god, when they cater those at work, I just 
I just go get lunch somewhere else. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, you're giving it to me free. But, um, yeah. I'm, I'm not eating it. Like, if I wanted a sandwich that my mom could make, first of all, I'd go dig her up. Secondly, I would probably just make it myself. Because I mean, you know, I can put mayo and, like, sliced bread or sliced meat on bread. Like even if you can't even if you're even if you suck at the game this game like I do and you don't know how to boil water, I think you could probably be just fine. You make a sandwich. And I'm dead. And she turns into an angel and flies away. Now that looks now that I look at it, that looks like a butt. <laughs> but everything looks like a butt to me. So, once again, just kind of going through these just so you can get a little taste of them. So, here's the first sprig, and I'm going to play this one. I'm not going to bother with no Noitopia, because I don't care about Noitopia. Well, that, and I'm not going to play it in Japanese. So, yeah, really, really, really cool. Up down the shoot again, which I will also get wrecked, completely wrecked in. I mean, it's no wonder that the Japanese are so fantastic at bullet hell shooters, because sometimes it seems like that's all they had. Whereas in the United States, I feel like we have a lot of different things, but I think what was probably our leading like obviously, once we got closer to the 2000, we became a um, first person shooter or something that I would say on the open still absolutely rocked out, and then the Japanese still struggle with a little bit. But um, I at least think that we don't have the motion sickness that they used to have from first person shooters. But yeah, top down shooters, Roman, or. Visual novels, even I don't know if there was such a thing that you can do with those. Um, puzzle games, fighting games, the Japanese have those. I really don't have them. It's just not first person shooters anymore. And then, of course, you got our buddies over there in South Korea who are just freaking phenomenal at RTS games. Like, you know, ah, shit. No, not that shit, because that shit is important. Like Lee, StarCraft, StarCraft 2, StarCraft, Dota. But yeah, these type of games are just, they're good at them. And one of these days I would allow two of my games in there. That day is not today though. I will definitely play more of this when I'm not half awake. Oh, my bombs don't replace every time I die. Oh, so, um, this is a, um, this is PC Engine. I picked the, P I started the PC Engine. Uh, part of this because basically you can choose between PC Engine and Turbo Graphics. I'll show you in fact in a moment because I think there's only one other game on. Well, actually, no, I lied. There are several more. Even though I feel like you've all seen Gradius, and I'm pretty sure you've all seen Salamander. But we'll, uh, uh, I'm tired, I don't want to play Gradius. Fuck it, we're playing Gradius. Yeah, you might also not hear me because I'm a little bit far away from the microphone too. Yeah, to be honest, I was up super late playing with this thing because I've been looking forward to this for way too long. So, here you go. Good old-fashioned Gradius. 
uh, just a little bit more, a little bit higher resolution and a little bit nicer looking than the uh, NES version. But more or less, pretty much exactly the same. Although I can't help but think that the Nintendo didn't have the, the uh, up and down scrolling on the screen like that though. And I'm not sure if I'm really a fan of that. So I always go for laser first if I can get it. Then I want to get a shield if I can. There we go. So this shield unfortunately only covers my front. If I get it in the back, I'm screwed. And ultimately this shield will go away. I think it's once it takes enough damage. Dang it. <laughs> I just skimmed it. For those of you who don't know, the blue ones uh, will kill everything on the screen. And then of course, if there's one that has a red power-up thing, those will be scattered all over the place. And generally, the monsters that have kind of a red tint to them will have, the, uh, have those red pellet things. Whoa. That guy almost killed me, so now I got two more. Let's get another option if I can. Get a second opinion. Now, the thing that sucks, though, is that if I get hit even once, I lose all of this. And that's going to be very soon, trust me. So, in this part, these volcanoes just erupt all over the place. And in the Nintendo version, this part is actually a little bit irritating. Because sometimes they get by your lasers and they kill you. But hopefully that's not going to happen here. Since I've got three options and we're lasering the fuck out of everything. Regular Bruce Willis. Oh shit. Fun little effect. So, and, and this kind of goes against what I was saying earlier about me not playing sports games. But when I was a kid, I, there was this hockey game that I used to love called Blades of Steel. And during the intermission, because it was a uh, Konami game, you actually got to sh blow up, or you got to play the bosses from Gradius during halftime. So you actually got to play that exact boss that we just fought while you're playing hockey. And that was just, that was cool. And that's part of what made me love the Gradius series so much. Although for a long time I didn't even know that, like for example, Life Force was a essentially a Gradius game. At, the, at least at the moment I'm not doing terrible. Give me time, I will start sucking quickly. Like that! I'm running into a wall. So, anyway, you get the you get the idea of Gradius. I definitely want to play Salamander because I just want you to see the difference between this and um, the NES version. So obviously we got much nicer graphics. And our upgrades are a little different here because you don't have to manually select your upgrades just to get them. Which I'm not a fan of because I really like actually really like picking those things. And I kinda wonder if maybe expert mode would you have that. You know, let's find out, I'm curious. Nope, looks like the looks like it's the same same deal. You just get stuff as you go. That's what I get for playing expert. <laughs> Alright, so that's that board game I was talking about. I'm gonna have to get Kaelin or something on here to help me play that and translate it. 
And I'm just going to have to have you take my word for it that Gradius 2 is just more of Gradius. And Spriggan Mark 2 is a side-scrolling version of what we were playing earlier, but with a different setting. And Super Parodier is just top-down shooter where you're a, uh, and you know what, I'll play that one. But let's, let's do Ninja Gaiden real quick. Let's see if I can get through the first level relatively quickly. So, as you can see, the sprite really isn't that much better. Like, it's pretty much the same sprite from the Nintendo version, just with a little bit more shadow added to it. He's not any better defined. He doesn't have any more details than the Nintendo version. Somehow those dogs look even less like dogs than they do in the Nintendo version, which is obscene. And then there's something you probably already noticed, but let me get to a point where I can see it again so I can make a proper comment on it. And you can see it right there. Like, when you're walking by, the parallax scrolling just makes it look like the city is actively running away from this game. Which is kind of funny, because it shouldn't be doing that. That's just, that's not how parallax works. In fact, it feels like it's backwards from the way parallax scrolling is supposed to work. Come on, damn it. Damn it. Yeah, hang on to the wall and let the dog nipple at your feet. Yeah, see how, like, the, the, the city behind us is moving faster than we are. That should be slowly scrolling in the background, not scrolling faster than us. And this guy has a lot more reach than the one in the Nintendo version. The one Nintendo version you can get like right up on top of them and you'd be fine. Here you just have to avoid these swipes. And I swear there's no way to jump over them without taking a hit and it's really that bad. Yeah, I just, I don't think that this is very, this is really an improvement over the Nintendo version. <sighs> and I will, oh yeah, I'm definitely going to play that one. So, I'll touch on this one real quick. Honestly, this reminds me a lot of Parodius, except without the tits. And really, what's the point of Parodius without the tits? Paro... Paro Caesar. Okay, whatever. We're gonna go with the PC Engine because he's got, he shoots fucking CDs. CDs nuts! Ha 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 90s joke. So, yeah, your power-ups in this one are literally cute cards. It's a cute little game. And I really like how smooth it plays. And just the cartoony graphics, because that is something I think that back in these days it just required so much talent to get that cartoon style right. And to have it show through all of the... Um, the rest of the graphics, like here everything is really, it, con it contrasts really nicely, it's well defined, it's not muddy, and once again like it just goes to show you how awesome of a job this emulator that they're using does, in fact I'm kind of curious as to what emulator they're using. Honestly, like, Bonk, the second Bonk, Revenge of Bonk, has some similar uh, graphic quality. Like, it just really looks nice with all of the, uh, I wouldn't call it anything aliasing but just everything looks so cartoony and hand-drawn, which for sure is something 
a lot of games from this era I just couldn't pull off correctly. So yeah, you get the you get the gist and I'm surprising I'm not doing too poorly either. Too surprising because I thought for sure I'd be dead. I guess those stars don't do anything. Yeah, so that's that's all it is. Just a fun little top-down space shooter with a very non-serious thing. Spriggan, like I said, it's a side scroller. I'm not gonna mess with it. But I am gonna play this because this is absolutely um, without doubt one of the best Castlevania games that you've never played. Unless of course you played it on the uh, PlayStation Portable or on the recently released PS4 Castlevania Collection which has a really fantastic um, version of this. On the PSP the one you get is actually a, like a 2.5D remake of it that plays really well and um, has, actually includes the original version. So I will start a new character just so that you can see Maria. I am really tired though. I think after this I'll probably just play, um, I'll just show you all uh, Lord of Thunder and then I will uh, call it a night after that. This video I will probably share on YouTube so that you can watch the first bit of it, including the part where I had no audio because for some reason my video capture card wasn't picking up audio. Gee, I sure hope she's okay. Their tight nosed gloves don't want to get that Rona. Good old Sphincter Belmont. So, I lied a little bit when I said this game was never released outside of Japan, so. Obviously it was, like what I said earlier about Castlevania Collection and the PlayStation Portable game, but also on the Super Nintendo there was a Dracula X game, but it was, wasn't was even remotely similar to this. It was pretty much just um, another Castlevania game with, um, a little, with a little bit different dressing. In fact, I would even go as far as to say that the graphics on the Super Nintendo one are probably just a little better. But the game was not nearly as good as this one. That's something I don't think a lot of kids nowadays really seem to understand. Nowadays, I feel like kids are just really, they make a really, really big deal about graphics. And they kind of forget to ask the important question of, is the game fun? And like when we played Zelda 2 and Zelda 1, I love those games because I think that they're just, they're fun. They're just fun distilled down to the most pure level, even though their graphics are very rudimentary at best. Same kind of goes for this. This is not the most beautiful looking Castlevania game, but it is definitely a far sight better than anything else on, this, on the Nintendo. Even if Super Castlevania and Dracula X on the Super Nintendo looked better. I also really like uh, Castlevania um, Bloodlines a lot too on the Genesis. And once again, that's um, not the best graphics in the world. But it's a, it's a fun game. Another thing is, like, man, these, these monsters just hurt you so much in this game. You cannot suck at, the, suck at this game. Kind of funny that this area just looks 
like um, Simon's, like one of the towns in Simon's Quest. Always thought it'd be cool to see those things get tied together. Fuck you, Dad. I'm not getting coronavirus from you today. I'll be getting it from 5G internet. I can't believe people actually think that. Like seriously, if you think that um, 5G data is what's causing the coronavirus and you think it's some like different conspiracy here, a fucking idiot. You're like an armchair philosopher who knows nothing about the topic but just believe what everyone else is saying. So, you know, Alright, so that's one thing I've never really been a big fan of. So when we're about to go hit the boss, if you notice, this is no longer Redbook Audio. This is just uh, PC Engine Synthesizer playing. That isn't to say that's bad, of course, because PC Engine, Engine Synthesizer sounds freaking amazing. So if this guy... shit. I'm going to tell you he's not very hard, but then I'm going to fuck up and die. And then you know, I'm going to be like, ha ha, what a noob. But I'm here to tell you that it's not that hard at all. Especially with the axe. And there's absolutely the chance he might pick you up. But yes, there you have it. First level of Castlevania Rondo Blood. This is a fantastic game. And honestly, if you buy this thing, buy it for this. Alright, I'm going to play for eight more minutes and then we're going to end the stream for tonight. So from now on, I'll probably be doing a seven to nine stream, but you know, there's nothing that says I can't go longer than that. It's just in this case, I am dead tired. And honestly, as much as I love Thunder, Lords of Thunder, I'm not ready to stop playing this particular game yet. And that is actually, if I'm not mistaken, the same the same um, sprite that you use for um, with your Belmont in the in, um, Symphony of the Night. And I think that's when we all have the Trevor Belmont. And then this current one is Richter. And Simon came after Trevor. I don't know whatever happened to him. What was the first one, Simon? Jeez. I am just not having a good time with my concentration here. Alright, so just to show you what you're talking about, Jason, so there's this little icon down here. So this takes me back to the TurboGrafx-16 menu, which is where it starts us at. So we got, like I said, Alien Crush, fantastic pinball game. I would love to play it, but I, I just don't have the, I don't have it in me right now. We're gonna play this for a little bit, and then we're gonna we're gonna call it for now. This game just has kick-ass music. This is a game that I would want to own the soundtrack on vinyl if, if they have it. Uh. So we'll start here. <laughs> so far I've only ever tried the fire armor. I think this time maybe we'll try the, the water armor. Why not? Let's get a level up. We'll go with a light level up. The cool thing is when you get down close to the ground, you can actually just run around on the ground and swing your sword and you get close to the enemy. Which does a shit ton of damage. And like a lot 
uh, the other games, you actually have a, um, a life bar, which the other used to get killed. Oh shit. Yeah, so. The blue gauge up there is also my life. The red, I think, is your armor. I can use a bunch of blue or keep them forever, I think. I got, I got lots of things in there. I am totally fine asleep. No point in this. Not because it's boring, but just because I'm that tired. Go down to this little hiding hole. So maybe during the pre-show later this week, I'll play some more TurboGrafx-16 on this thing. But um, just to give you an idea of what I think of this little system, I absolutely love it. It was definitely worth waiting to get it shipped from Japan and worth the $100 it was worth. Or it cost, rather. Um, if you are a fan of Japanese video games, and especially if you're a fan of PC Engine or TurboGrafx-16, you won't be disappointed with this. This is not a repeat of the Sony PlayStation Mini, although with the Sony PlayStation Mini I'm actually not like a huge detractor for it either. I actually didn't mind it so much because it did what I wanted to do, which was just to let me have a little bit of a uh, trip back to the past to play some old PlayStation games. But honestly, now with something like an NVIDIA Shield, you can do so much better than that for emulation's sake. But um, everybody that showed up, I think it's just um, Jason and uh, Zappa there. Thank you for coming and uh, listening to me ramble on while being simultaneously drunk and um, just super, super tired. I hope you all had fun and... Um, I hope to see everybody on Saturday, because um, we're going to start um, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, and that's going to be a lot of fun. It's one of my favorites. So, um, thank you for coming, guys. Peace out. <laughs>